I thought it might go that direction. I thought it might go a salt burn direction at one point with the fucking <laughs> sauna. Oh, I was talking about the, I was the, um, the, the bus station or the bus stop. When a naked dude walked up, I said, like, here we go again. <laughs> yeah, we're just going to start this shit live. The only time I caught the Holy Ghost was when I was in church drinking. Like, they're two dumb dudes. Welcome to the latest episode of Sarat and Chris's Movie Therapy Podcast. You, um, you, you just, you look like you're like, you, you, you are you you're not claustrophobic obviously you were a tank driver or whatever because i like tight spots <laughs> yeah you especially, haven't been used to them in a while so <laughs> especially when they juice it <laughs> why you gotta take it in that direction i'm talking about your layout you here talking about other layouts and uh <laughs> i mean <laughs> <laughs> oh god oh <sighs> It's just, it's just funny. You got like, you look like you're in a hood dentist office. A hood dentist office? Yeah, you got I mean, the fake foliage. Where, where you think they get the gold teeth done and everything? everything? Bro, bro, don't listen. My mom, right? She got gold teeth done in. I said teeth too. She got gold teeth yeah. done in Cambodia. I was like, Mom, how you gonna be in America with good dentistry and you're gonna go to Cambodia to get your gold teeth put in? Man, listen. There's a, reason why, there's a reason why she looked like she got into a fight with Mike Tyson now. Oh, you know what? Go well. <laughs> oh, now I get it. Yeah. <laughs> because wrong? she got dentures now, I guess, right? Or yeah. something. Because yeah, she, I never I never seen it without her teeth until that one time. And I was talking to her. He's like, Ma, why are you letting you out to fight Mike Tyson? And I was like, what the fuck is going on with her? <laughs> Bro, she out there should look like Smeagol. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh sorry, shit! Have you listened to this? Sorry, ma. <laughs> For real. Oh man. Uh, well, with that being said, welcome to the latest episode of Sarat and Chris's Movie Therapy Podcast. It's your boy Sarat, aka Makazi, and your boy Chris Brown, aka Red for Delta. How's everybody doing out there? Well, you know, I uh, I hope they're doing good because after the last movie we watched, I needed a reset. Well, from, from, from Valentine's Day. I'm just no, I'm, no, well, or salt burn. Day, no salt burn. <laughs> well, I haven't, I haven't edited. I got to edit and put out the Valentine's Day episode. But that salt burn one, I just yeah. Even Valentine's Day, that bullshit ass movie. Yeah, it was better episode. than salt burn though. <laughs> better is a strong word. It's different. <laughs> <laughs> oh uh, man, man, yeah, yeah, like I'm, ex- I was, ex- I'm excited to talk about this movie because I think this movie is going to. Elicit some, some, some deep thoughts, especially from okay. you, you know, because it, it's this might ring a little, you know. I think Mike Epps might have played you in this movie, but we'll see. No, no I forgot. I, okay, <laughs> <laughs> I know, <laughs> I know what you're getting at with that. We'll say that for another time. <laughs> well, you would say for later in the episode. Oh uh, shit! <laughs> I ain't have laundry hanging up in my car. God damn it. <laughs> They had yeah, like Look, Christmas lights up there. Hold on. Talk about, it was a party mobile on the weekends, and then little did they know I'm going to sleep in the parking lot. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody piled up in there, we head to the club. After Jerry Robbie off. All right, cool. Let me go find my spot. I know, yeah, you you take your like you know how people clean up after a party? That's when you go to the car wash, you forgot. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh Ooh. man. Well, the movie we watched this week is a movie that I've been interested in for a while, mainly because of one of the actors in it is Jonathan Majors. Mm-hmm. And I had heard a long time ago that like he killed it in this movie. Mm-hmm. So I was, you know, you know, really curious about it. And for some reason, I have this, I don't know if it's like a, 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 a tick or whatever, but for some reason, if a movie is set in San Francisco, I kind of mm-hmm. have to watch it. Okay. I, I feel the same way with movies set in Boston. If a movie set in Boston, I have to watch it. I don't know why. But see, but see, you've been to San Francisco. I've never been there. I've flown over it. Like, I've seen the Golden Gate Bridge, but I've never actually been there to, like, chill for a couple of days. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I, yeah, I've been there a couple of times. I was actually just in San Francisco uh, when, when I was watching the movie. Mm, okay. And, yeah, I don't know. There's, there's something about that city that just makes me, like, it's, I don't know, makes me, like, whenever anything's set in there, it feels like it's its own character, so I always have to watch a movie set in there. Like, if, do you watch movies set in specific places? Chicago, yeah, yeah. 
What's your, um, more what's your favorite Chicago movie? My favorite Chicago movie? Yeah, don't say Chicago. Chicago. No, I'm fuck, say, get out of here. <laughs> I knew that but, was coming. Uh, it's, it's, it had to. My favorite Chicago movie? Um, I know I ain't seen them all. Um, huh, I gotta think. No, that, that was a series, the Power series. I was watching the Tommy story. That's in Chicago. Um, it's more series, I guess, because Shameless is in Chicago. <laughs> Um, yeah. uh, Bro, the Dark Knight was the Dark Knight was shot yeah, in Chicago. Yeah, that actually that, that was the summer I moved there. They, yeah. No, no. Okay, yeah, the summer I moved there, they had just got done filming the Dark Knight because they blew up Laura Wacker to redo yeah, it. Yeah. When I when I was living there, that's when they did Transformers, and you can actually see them flying around the city in the jets doing all the, the like the shit was dope. Oh, that's, um, that's actually pretty crazy. You be sitting yeah. there, all of a sudden you just see some some ship flying by. By nah, that's just the Transformers. Yeah, they're it. over. They're over the filming on Thirty First Street. But really, oh, okay. Hey, I used to yeah. see that in Boston. I'd be walking around. They'd be filming movies in Boston. Hmm. I try to stop and watch them film, and you just see the AD just like, Yo, fuck out the way, you, you, you fucking up the shot. Yeah, yeah, for real. Um, I, I was I was doing something one night, fucking around. You no, know, me. It um, I would go walk across the street, and the guy stopped. Was like, don't move. Like, we just wait for like five minutes, and I was like, huh. And he's like, just wait. And then sure enough, two cars came speeding around the corner and like in the car chase scene. Yeah. And I was like, okay, that was good. Like, you go one more time? Okay, cool. You got time. Go ahead, walk. I was like, huh? Like, what are y'all filming here? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. What movie was it? Uh I think not uh, what was it? Something with Bruce Willis. Um so, God dang it. So not that de- Bruce Willis and fucking what's his name? Um Bruce Willis and uh Tracy Morgan movie, right? No, no, no. This was um I wanna say it's I know it's not called maybe Death Wish or something like that. Death Wish. Mm. I can't death think proof? of it. I'm getting it. Was death proof? Maybe. Oh. It was something with death. Now, I know that. But you know, it was a movie with him. Yeah. Mm. Oh. But yeah. Well, the movie we talking about this week is the last man, though the last black man in San Francisco. <laughs> yeah. Now, when I sent you the, the the screenshot of the movie, you was like, "All right, this this is gonna be good." So yeah. I'm, I'm curious to see what was your immediate reaction when I sent you the movie because I, I, I'm assuming you didn't know anything about the movie no not at all so what did you when you saw that title what did that what did that elicit in your brain um well of course the title the last black man in San Francisco so obviously something San Francisco um I felt more like a deep story of somebody that um was leaving the city that probably had grew up there yeah which it which in a way this movie kind of did that but not but not the way I thought it was you know what I'm saying? Like somebody who was like grew up there, or whatever, and was like his his time to go. Yeah. To like the last black man in San Francisco. But so yeah, I thought it was just gonna be like one of those stories was like it was time for him to leave the city, even though he like basically built it up. That's what I thought. Yeah. Well, you know and the joke one. about San Francisco, right? Is like and you know, all the white people moved in to kick all the black people out over the bridge to Oakland. That's what oh that's what it is. Yeah, I, know, yeah. I know I know they kicked all the black people out, but I know went to Oakland. Yeah, yeah, that's the yeah, that's the that's the joke. Is that mm. you know, all the black people live in Oakland, they just looking over at San Francisco like, oh, we used to be over there. <laughs> oh man. It's kinda like DC and Baltimore. Mm. Oh no, but DC still got a bunch of I'm about to say, but yeah, DC still the hood. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so off rip, did you like the movie? Was it was it what you thought it was gonna be? Not what I thought it was gonna be. And um I have to say no, I didn't like it. Really? Mm. Mm, okay, we're gonna we're gonna get into some discussions about this because yeah. I love this movie. I, I like the acting in it, but as far as the movie and the story itself, I just felt like there was some things that just like okay, what was the point of this? And then other parts like they could have did more with this. You know what I'm saying? All right, I'm I can't wait. Okay, I can't wait to see like what what you're talking about because I when I was watching it, I was like, man, this is a pretty this is a really deep movie. And like, oh, I just I thought it was super complex and really just thought out, hmm. like, but then done in an artsy way. This is one of those artsy movies that I actually like, not some salt burn ass shit. This, you know, yeah. I thought, I thought it might go that direction. I thought it might go a salt burn direction at one point with the fucking <laughs> sauna. Oh, uh, I was talking. About the, I was want to own the the bus station or the bus stop. When a naked dude walked up, I said, like, here we go again. <laughs> like, yeah. There's like just so many like this there's, like, there's so many person that just didn't make any sense to me. Like he's sitting on sitting on the bench, ladies and gentlemen, we jump around, y'all know that. Yeah. Cool, waiting for the bus. 
naked dude walks up with a trash bag, sits it down, and then they got a party bus sitting there talking about some, this guy fucks. <laughs> okay. Um I think that's I think I think they were trying to show how crazy uh San Francisco's gotten. Mm. Like, okay, it's kinda like it's kinda it's kinda become its own like I don't know, entity. It's its own like uh, there's a spirit there that's like you know not unlike anywhere anywhere else, and it's almost like, hey man, why are you trying to stay here? Mm. Like when it's so crazy. I don't know. I think I, that's what I got from that. It's like you know, it's like this because he says this line at the end of the movie, which is I think it's talking about, which rings really true to me. Mm. And like you know, on the like, bus. Yeah. No. Uh, no. Okay. I was it on the bus. Yeah, yeah. When he tells a girl like you're not mm-hmm. allowed to, you're not allowed to hate the city. Yeah. You're not allowed to hate it unless you love the city. Like you're not. Mm-hmm. Allowed to hate it. Yeah, me, that rings true. Like you know, you see people talk shit about a city. I'm like, you from here? Did you grow up mm. here? Like, do you did you have a kind? Then, then like, stop talking shit about the city because you don't know what it's yeah. like. Yeah, like, that's like Springfield. Yeah, I, I feel like that in just life in general. Yeah, like you're not allowed to hate something unless you love it. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. unless you gotta, yeah, you gotta have you gotta have that relationship with it because hate is a very strong word. Right? Mm-hmm. And like, there's very few things in life that I can say I hate. The only thing I really hate is like green olives. And that's not yeah. even that I hate it. It's just like, you know, this shit don't, this shit don't mix with me. But every so often I taste it again to see if I, you know, would, if my taste buds change. And so far, nope. No. Nah. You gotta put on pizza, man. I'm not black olives, man. Green. I like black. I don't know about you. <laughs> You know, you got all that white in the background and around you. I like what am, black. What am I wearing? <laughs> <laughs> it's not that you look like you got no shirt on. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> oh man, <laughs> there's so many different angles I want to take that, but that's not made for uh, made for TV right now. <laughs> yeah, all you look like is you look like you got you know laser tattoo removal and you got clean shoulders. Oh, that's it. Oh nah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh all right. man! All right, what you drinking? Because we're gonna need we need gonna need. Oh yeah! I need. Oh. I'm, I really need to know why you did not like this movie. Today I am sipping and staring, my guy. Sipping and staring. Yeah, sipping and steering, not drinking and driving. Oh, oh sipping and steering. Okay. So this this ain't this ain't your passenger seat. Hey hey hey! Relax. They're just outside. <laughs> Go trust them new niggas. <laughs> Oh heard, God! I heard some someone running by, like you know, with, with, and their voice is a little too loud, and they're trying to react like they're trying to break in here, which is oh. good. But you know, now I'm trying to record. He was like, "Wait, man, I smell chitlins." <laughs> Speaking of, I actually found me. I mean, there's probably plenty around here, but I actually found a soul food restaurant yeah. that got good? some chitlins. I I I I, when I um I stopped through there the other day, uh, actually watching the car, yeah. and um I seen it. And it's like hidden in the back corner, so of course you don't even know it's there. Yeah, but yeah, it smelled just like chicken and grease, and I was like, "Yes, I need to go right. see yeah. what's going on here." Yeah, have you? So you haven't been there yet? Oh, I, I walked and looked at it. The walls are dingy, <laughs> graffiti. I was like, "Yes, this is what I need to come taste." I walked in with a, like a notepad, like, "All right, just make sure you guys are up to par." All right, <laughs> grease traps full. All right, cool. <laughs> yep, there we go. Oh. No, I got, I mean, there's, a, there's a spot here in uh orlando it's actually a chinese spot mm. do, like it's like old school chinese barbecue but they do like some deep fried chitlins deep fried oh chitlins. yeah you're talking about that bro oh i'm salivating already look i actually want to try to deep, I ain't no deep fried chitlin shit bro, yeah yo deep fried chitlins and some white rice bro you speaking to me right now look, that's why i told you i'm black bro yeah yeah. yeah, I told you. I told you to say if, if like in joking, if, you, in joking, if you go before me, the first thing I'm saying that come out of my mouth is he was more of a nigga than I was. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I, I, I'm gonna be honest. I used to think that you'd probably go before me, but seeing how many times you done escaped the devil's <laughs> wrath, I really think you might be immortal. <laughs> oh, shit, uh, I'm, I'm getting tired of fighting death. Let me not say that, man. <laughs> Before some shit really happy, that'd be it. Oh man. Oh. All right, yeah. So what you drinking? Yeah. Today I'm sticking with Jack Daniel, of course, but I'm going with the hundred proof bonded. Good lord. You're trying, yeah. to, get, you're, you're trying to get some shit off your mind. 
Uh, get shit off my life. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so that's what you shoot or what you're drinking. Oh, uh, no, I'm not shooting. I'm putting off mice. I'm okay. sipping it, sip it and stare. Okay. All right, I see you. I just going to work through the rest of this peanut butter and jelly moonshine. Nice. And then, you know, I'm uh, I'm on my, my fitness a little bit. So today I got me a little uh, shaker. The fuck is it a shaker? Water. And then I'm going to add some myoscience electrolytes. Where's the, okay, so you drink some moonshine and some electrolytes. Okay. Yeah, it's counteracting. Okay, you know what? You know what? I'm not going to say shit because I didn't mix all types of protein drinks and alcohol with it. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know you do a concoction. You like, It'll wake you up. Yeah, of course. It's going to wake you up and give you the shits. Oh, man. Hey, that's, oh, my gosh. That's, did I ever tell you the story? I work in Chicago, and I, um, I'll go to the gym in the morning before I go to work. Yeah. And I always had a protein shake, but it was filled with alcohol. <laughs> And my homeboy was like, you get out the gym? I said, yeah. He said, he said what you sipping on? I said, a protein drink. Shot, try some. He took a sip. <laughs> he took a sip and said, oh, shit, I got to start working out. <laughs> uh, that's, that's, like, that's like at Planet Fitness. They used to have pizza day at Planet Fitness. <laughs> hey, come work out. You're going to get you a slice. I was like, what? That motherfucker is counteracting the shit. Man. <sighs> All right. Let's let's take it. No. Let's get to talking about black people in San Francisco. Yeah. I, for the life of me, I can't figure out why you didn't like this movie. Because I actually thought you of all people would connect really well with it. And not, and, and not in a joking way. I'm being actually being serious right now. Because it's like about, to me, it's about uh, uh, black dudes who aren't your run of the mill stereotypical black dudes. Okay. And they're trying to like, you know, kind of figure out their place in this world, mm -hmm. you know, and mm -hmm. in, in one guy, you know, he's looks like he's holding on to the past because he doesn't feel like he really belongs anywhere. Mm -hmm. And so he's trying his best to hold on to the one part of his life that he thought was worth his, something. Yeah. And then the like other guy. Greatest... Go ahead. I was going to say like his greatest memory or fondest memory or whatever yeah. yeah and then the other guy's like you know he's just trying to you know he's trying to he's trying to be himself amongst a world who doesn't really understand him mm -hmm. you know i was like oh this okay. is great. I say, yeah, this should, chris should connect it, it, it wasn't a bad movie i just felt like i don't know none of it made sense to me until like which i hate to say this until the very end yep but i don't know like right. there was no lead up but yeah all right let's delve into this yeah. Cheers. Yes, indeed. <sighs> ah, warms my soul. All right. So mm -hmm. uh, the story of this movie, The Last Black Man in San Francisco, is you got one guy. Um, what was his name? Lamont? Was I was Lamont? I don't know. They, the they called him Mont for short. Mont and Jimmy. Yeah. Okay, or so Jimmy, yeah, Jimmy was the, the main character. Okay. And then Lamont was, I think, was the the friend. Okay. It's just Jonathan Majors. Yeah. So you have uh, two guys uh, who are best friends, and you find out that uh, Jimmy's essentially homeless. He's a squatter. He's mm -hmm. just living on his friends in his friend's house with him, and like he's always kind of always been homeless or whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, I maybe it's it's a story about how the, the housing crisis has affected San Francisco. Okay. And now like the people that kind of built up the city have just been kind of pushed off and had to move out of the city and, and, you know, make way for all these rich people that were moving in. Hmm. You know? And so okay. you got Jimmy, who's like, you know, his fondest memory was living in this house. So he was trying to like, you know, he's a squatter. He's trying to go back and like get back at that, get the house back because that's his, again, like you said, his fondest memory. Yeah. And it's just, you know, different, you know, ways of trying to to, to, to get into it mm. so yeah so talk to me what did, what, <sighs> what did what did you why did you not this is like it's at certain points didn't make any sense you like know what? what i'm saying like for instance the dudes sitting out front of his house constantly just talking shit to each other 
You know what I'm saying? Yeah, because those are just brothers just talking shit. Yeah. Um, some parts were funny. Yeah, but you don't. But you. But okay. But you. In you know, if you go live in the projects or like in an urban area, you walk. You walk down the street onto the street corner. You just see brothers hanging out in front of the packy yeah. or some shit like that. Yeah. You know, a lot of them are usually drug dealers and shit like that. But in this instance, like it's just, it's like fucking what you call it, King of the Hill. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Some motherfuckers just hanging out, talking shit. Basically, like I don't know. I think to me. It's talking shit to other people because I'm uh, uh, kind of depressed about my position in life. Yeah, I, I caught that. I caught that message later on in the movie yeah. after um, <clears throat> Kofi went to go visit them in the house. Yeah. And the next day was talking shit about him. Yeah. Like, you same shirt wearing ass. <laughs> okay, so, okay, what do you think they were trying to say with that moment? I think it was one of those situations where because when he was chilling with them, it's almost like... <sighs> If this makes sense, how you might be friends with the nerd in school when it's just mm-hmm. you and the nerd at school. Yep. But when you're with your boys, that's the nerd at school and you talk shit about them. So you're trying to be cool by association almost? Like, yeah. I gotta, you know, I got to talk shit about you to show these other people that I'm cool. Yeah. But, but you know, y'all, which I know y'all both lived on the same block and take the bus home and y'all walk together every day, every damn day. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Something like that. Yeah. I feel like it was like, Cause you know you get you get those kids in school that everybody's friends with, but the ones that everybody always picks on. Even though we're all friends with that person, mm-hmm. you know, you, everybody's always like you know cracking jokes about them and shit like that. And it just felt to me that like, if if it felt like you got these two people who again people don't really understand. Okay, and it's like okay, let me let us let us clown them so that we could feel good for a moment even though we're all sitting here on the same block trying to just make shit work yeah because even with um what's his name Mont, uh what's his name John, jonathan majors his character yeah you, like it's almost like he has a disability a mental disability you know what i'm saying yeah like he's almost an autistic and shit yeah that could be it or no I mean, he's just different because even when he was in the mirror and what he say he was like um he was like what's up nigga he's like <laughs> he was like nigga and he was like how you doing, nigga? I was like, okay. <laughs> no, but okay, okay. But <laughs> I'm just saying. He was trying it out for size. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I think okay, so for him, I okay, we find out that he's been writing a play or he's he wants to write a play. Mm-hmm. He's, he's very writing, artistic. Very art artistic. Yeah, and he was writing it about the character like, about Kofi, one of the dudes that was standing on the corner. Mm-hmm. And it was almost like he was trying to find his voice. Mm. fit in instead of like you know he was he was who he is but he's trying to he's still trying to fit it because like when he invites them when he, he invites him over he's that uncomfortable what up what up my n-word yeah out here what up and then he gave him the, the dap but you could tell yeah. he was uncomfortable doing it yeah oh, oh yeah you know when he walked to the house he's yeah. like what? he's like what up and he's like excuse me sir and walked he walked, he walked beside him. no he said pardon me he, <laughs> said, he said pardon me right after i was like yeah. okay that's two different <laughs> extremes but like i mean I, there's people out there that are like that like it's they, they they're putting on airs in order to try and you know you know pass off this persona that mm-hmm. isn't true to who they are yeah and you could see him it was almost like you know Oh, those are the cool guys. Let me let me try to be like them. Mm. But I'm I I connect more with the artistic kid. I mean, now that we're older, I mean, yeah. Cause this is my opinion. You 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 can tell me what you think. You realize simple shit is so much better. I'm so serious. Uh, hey, like, go, go 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 a little deeper. Explain that. Okay, like for instance, I, I've told you this. There's only one pair of drawers I've ever wanted. The number twelve, mm-hmm. blue and white. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, now that I'm older. I, I don't really care too much to get them, but I still want them because it's something I've always wanted. Yeah. However, I don't got a closet full of freaking Jordans. Mm-hmm. I'm the type to walk into um, like Marshalls or something and see a pair of Nikes that are on clearance. Like, holy shit, I like the, I like the color and get them now. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, they don't got to be the, the freshest shoes on, in, in, in there anymore. So I, I feel like now I identify more with Major's character just because it's more simple. 
because I prefer to live a simple. Uh, I prefer to live a simple life now. Yeah. Versus back then, I probably wouldn't want to be the cool dude on the block with the fresh gear and the gold teeth and everything. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. 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 As a matter of fact, I wanted to. I did have gold teeth. <laughs> Just saying. I can't. I can't picture you with gold teeth, bro. You know, I my yearbook. Like, oh, my yearbook. You look in your yearbook. Then the other in there. I'm surprised you was uh, there for the uh, the pictures. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So all right. So the, but okay. The main the main story in this movie is you got Jimmy again, who's trying to who's in he's engrossed by this house. Like he wants his house. He's gonna do whatever mm. he can. Do. So he's been working on this house and trying to fix it up. Even though he don't live there, yeah, <laughs> he was trying to live, he was trying to paint the windowsill, and they started throwing food at him. <laughs> Get the hell out of here, man! Like, why are you uh, doing this? Yeah, but I, I, I can identify with that in a sense that, like, you know, he's he's trying to hold on to this moment in his life where mm-hmm. everything was actually to him was happy. Yeah, but you, I mean, if, if he's at this point in his life where he's living on his. He sleeps over at his friend's house, basically essentially living there without, you know, never being, never asking to. And you find out he's been homeless for a long time. Yeah. Like, I don't know. I just, I can, I can see someone, you know, getting dealt a fucking shitty hand and just mm. trying to like go back to that moment where life felt okay. Yeah. You know? Uh, yeah. I definitely understand that. You know, did you, um, did you, when you, uh, like when you see that, like, do you have any moments in your life where you're like, ah, oh, fuck, like you just felt like everything was going downhill and you're like, let me go, let me go back to this moment where shit was like, okay for, for a minute. Oh yeah, definitely. Um, I'm not going to go into details, but, um, when I had really, really hit a bad spot and I was like, I got to get out of here. And the first thing I did was book the flight back to Chicago. Yeah. Just for like, I, I was there for like two days just to go be around a place that I felt I, I were a place where I found me. Yeah. If, if that makes sense. Cause even I still feel that now some, some days um, where I'm sitting on the couch or in the backyard doing something. And it's just like, I wish I could just go to Chicago for like the evening and come back. What is it about Chicago that you connect so well with? Because I grew up there and I don't mean like um, born and raised. I had to grow up personally in myself. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, um, like, do you have a moment in there where you, realized like my, sorry i i completely i i got i got squirrel brain sometimes you know how a dog <laughs> when just sees like we'll see a squirrel so i yeah. was trying to say something but i like the tv's on in the background and i looked up and i just saw like a beer that's called ho garden and i was like oh that's a good name for a beer <laughs> okay oh but, man i didn't what, the, what was i trying to say see god damn it you you, you said no hold on. Right, you did, said, okay, was did, yeah, did you have a moment in chicago where you realized like I've grown up or like I'm growing up. Like, you know, like mm, you, get that, mm. you get that moment where you realize like it's, a, it's like at this moment, the old shit just, you realize don't really matter that much. Yeah. Um, this might be a, like the most shallowest scenario, but I stopped wanting to go to the hood clubs and want to go to lounges. Why? <laughs> as crazy as it sounds, I like to dress up. I want to put it in a suit. I want to look like I was somebody important, even though I worked in the dirt. Okay, okay, I feel you. you know, so it's like, even though like the hood clubs was fun, you know, the music, everything, all that good stuff, yeah. but it's still the hood. Yeah. So then when I got invited to go to certain places downtown and we're on rooftops and everything, and I show up looking like me, and I'm like, wait a minute, this ain't that type of environment. Yeah. Like, so then I started carrying clothes in the car in case I, so I, I, I mean, because I never knew I was going to be, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. <clears throat> so I like the fact of being able to go anywhere and everywhere and being ready to look the part to fit in. But I, I say I grew up because I didn't want to go to the other spots anymore. I want yeah. I want to actually have a drink or as you as you say, like a Manhattan with yeah. the with the blazer on and maybe a cool V neck t shirt and just chilling talking to people or vibing with a live band. I do didn't feel, need the DJ. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Do you feel like those scenarios or those places made you feel like like this is the life I want? Versus the other places like, hey, this is the life I'm living right now. Mm-hmm. Is that like, oh no, this is this is like what? This is what I dream of having. This is the type of environment I want to have in my life. You know what's funny about that? <clears throat> because now that I'm I'm thinking back on it, I think I went to the hood clubs because I was used to going to them. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Just like the the dance battles, you know how we used to do, like yeah. having having fun, you know what I'm saying? Some of some of those places we went to got shot up like after we yeah, left. Yeah, I know. <laughs> but um 
so it wasn't that this is like when I went to the different lounges and blues bars and stuff like that, it wasn't about this is the life that I want. Yeah. It was more about I can still be me, but I can, but I don't have to be that me here. You know what I'm saying? Do like, you pref- did you prefer? Do you prefer do you prefer the, the old you or do you prefer the you that appreciates putting on a suit? And looking nice. Oh, the the me that the 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 suit man. I I wear a suit any day of the week. But the funny thing is, I I wear a suit, but I still prefer to work in the dirt. Yeah. Well, because I feel like working in the dirt, and mm-hmm. yeah, we're using that as a metaphor. It's just you know when you work to me, working in the dirt means like that gritty, like, grimy, sweating. Yeah, like you feel yeah. like you're putting in a hard day's work. Mm-hmm. I prefer that because there's there's this satisfaction of doing something mm-hmm. and seeing the result. Mm, okay. Versus, yeah. Versus like lack of a, like I I understand that like stock trading and people on Wall Street like yeah that's a real job but it almost feels like you're hacking the system. Mm-hmm. You know it almost feels like you're cheating. Mm. And it's, it, it, uh, you know when they say an honest day's work, I, I I hate to say it but to me that doesn't feel like an honest day's work. Mm. You know you're playing with other people's money in order to try to you know move some shit around and hopefully you make some extra money that you can get make some money off of where it's like yeah. I, I built this motherfucker with my hand mm-hmm. I'm giving it to someone and now they're paying me for that you know whatever that ashtray i just made or some shit yeah like I, I used to love that when there'd be like little job functions because i always wore a jumpsuit at work if i wasn't jumpsuit i was gonna sleeve a t-shirt saying that i wear it now you know what i'm saying because I, I was always in the dirt i mean i'm, I'm laying pipe <laughs> So to speak, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I was a gas mechanic, people, for the record. You know what I'm saying? But we'd be in some raunchy, fucked up ass spots. You know what I'm saying? He ain't, this ain't gigolo, Chris. This is, like... <laughs> this is working, Chris. Even though sometimes it's all work, but you know, it just depends on what tools you're using. No. Nah. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, um, but nah, I Chris like. Gigolo, we... black gigolo. Hell yeah. <laughs> But when we would have like job functions and I would actually get dressed and then go, they'd be like, what the hell? Like, what you do, Rag at? Like, you got hair? <laughs> like, yeah. like, you actually clean it real nice. And I was like, I actually like to, but you know, the job we do is dirty and I like the dirty job. I yeah. like I like them both, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I like I like the job that like it makes me feel like I'm like doing something substantial. I'm I'm, mm-hmm. I'm we're, we're artisans. We're people mm-hmm. who like, you know, the things we like to do. Mm-hmm. Sometimes, like, you know, you can have a whole crew, but at the same time, it's like you like to be the one doing the shit, mm. you know? Yeah. And that's why, like, and so in the movie, you had Jimmy, who's, he's, you know, encapsulated by this house. So he's doing whatever he can to just be connected to it. And so you got these, you know, the rich people who are living in there and all of a sudden they're out, they're moving out because there's an argument going on with the family and he sees this moment. That like he can he can get in there and try to you know take control of it. I yeah. have I don't know squatter laws. That shit don't sound right to me. And mother, you, know, you just go into your place, put the fucking utilities in their name, and now all of a sudden they 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 live there. Look, I don't know squatter laws either, but um, if you're paying the bills. If you're paying for the lights and the electric, yeah, I mean, the only thing you ain't paid is the rent because those I know you live there. Yeah, yeah, they they ain't gonna ask questions. <laughs> but it's like I, don't, I I've never thought of that as like an option. Mm. Just squatting, just, I'm gonna go into this place and I live here now. Yeah, that's still yeah. I can say that out loud. It still don't make sense to me. Yeah, uh, maybe just, it's because I'm conditioned to you know a uh, modern society where it's like oh no like in order to have a place you got to go buy it and or pay rent or do something but like mm. i don't know what is what is a house just a place you stay so why does i don't know Look, can we can we can we go to the comic comedic part real quick go ahead so ain't that the car you used to live in <laughs> where he's <all> like <clears throat> i just <laughs> Like his dad, apparently his dad was like a, he had to have been a crackhead or some shit. Mm-hmm. They, they was talking his, shit about him. Yeah, his dad lost the house, mm-hmm. and then <laughs> hold up, hold on, let me take a sip. Okay, <laughs> this is one, this is completely off subject, but it was one moment That's... in the movie in the movie where I was like, God damn, like I really think Chris is watching this. Like this motherfucker picked this movie because of me. <laughs> When that motherfucker was eating sunflower seeds, I was like, is that how Chris eats when he's driving the truck? <laughs> uh, no, I don't. 
Nah, I'll, 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 take, I'll take the whole bag, just turn it up. And, I, and actually, I, I don't even know if it's okay, this is gonna make any sense. I, I, I put a whole wad on one side of my cheek mm. and I literally crack one at a time and switch, it, and switch the shells to the other side. No, it's exercising my tongue, I guess. And then, um, <laughs> then when it's all. And then, <laughs> This is, why, this is why you're gonna get in trouble <laughs> and have too many youngins around. Uh, All them sunflower seeds you've been eating. <laughs> so I've been training my whole life for this shit. <laughs> Oh man, Ugh. but yeah, but once I get the full water shells, then I spit it all up. Yeah, but the dude was just like he'd take a handful. He was like, ah, nom, 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 nom. <laughs> and I'm, I'm like, that you're not even getting the seed out. Yeah, like you, all you all you tasting is salt. This is wonder why cholesterol is so high in the black community. The motherfuckers yeah. eating fucking uh, sunflower seeds like it's steak. Sunflower seeds, pork grinds, um, fried chicken, fried pork chops. Yeah. Um, Ribs, you know, yeah. Yep. So it is collard greens, cornbread, black eyed peas, Bro, gravy. Could you see yourself like just squatting in a house? I'm not judging nah. anyone. I'm not going to judge anyone who does whatever they can for their life. But could you see yourself doing it? No, I really couldn't see myself doing it. However, I've learned that you never know what you're going to do unless you're in that position. So yeah. me, it's me right now. I couldn't see myself squatting somewhere. Yeah, I, no, I just couldn't see it happening. But if I, but if I find myself in a position where it's all fucked up, and I happen to walk buy a nice house that people just moved out, and I left the front door open because they just don't give a shit. Wait a minute, I might have to hold this house for a week or two. Does the water still work? Okay, yeah. no, no, shit, till I get my shit together. I, I wouldn't mean, stay I, there. <laughs> I don't like. I don't know. I I don't I don't know what it's like to be homeless and like. I would love to say like I wouldn't do certain things, mm -hmm. but like I've been in LA and I've seen you know tents on the side of the highway and them motherfuckers got Wi-Fi. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you see the fucking shit up on the fucking highway, and I'm like, whoa, yeah, so they got Wi-Fi. <laughs> yeah, so I'm just like, okay, I don't know what I would do, but clearly like that's you know, it's not above anyone else or below anyone else to do certain things like that. Like, mm. especially if you have a connection to the house, like, you know, he was telling this story about how his grandfather built that house from scratch. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, all of a sudden their family is forced out of the neighborhood and some rich white people live in there now. Yeah. Like, I feel a certain way. If my dad built some shit from scratch mm -hmm. and now all of a sudden you're telling me I can't afford to live there, but some, you know, old crusty white people who just happen to have been lawyers for a couple of years are living in my house that my dad built. Yeah, true. Fuck that shit. That's like, someone, that's like someone eating off your plate. Yeah, mm, yeah, true. You ain't cooked this fucking steak, but you want a slice? Fuck out of here. I, um, uh, yeah. Yeah, nah. But then he said in the movie, though, he told himself to lie so much that he thought it was true. I can see that. Yeah, I mean, oh yeah, definitely. Shit, I've had to repeat it a lot many times to, just to make it sound like it was true. Yeah, but why? But why do you think a person does that? To do live in their own fantasy. You think they're trying to convince other people, or you think they're trying to convince themselves? Both. Elaborate. They're, they're trying to convince themselves to believe what they know is a lie, and when they see other people believe their lie, it makes it seem like it's more true. But why? Why do you do that? Why does a person do that? Self fulfillment, maybe to um, not necessarily feel like you belong, but um, I can't think of the word, but yeah, it's something to do with your inner you, like you're trying to fill a void. You, you, yeah. you're, you want something filled. I just know what it is. I don't know if it's your ego, um, shit. I mean, uh, maybe it's a self confidence thing, like you know, that, that too. Yeah, it's like it's like you, if you can convince other people that you're something you're not mm -hmm. maybe maybe one day you'll be something that you're not you mm. know? or it's like you're trying to convince yourself that you don't like your your circumstances aren't you like i don't that's not who i am this is this is who i am this is who i'm supposed to be over here so you yeah. can do whatever you can in order to to convince the people that like this is where you belong mm. oh. yeah um no, yeah i think of like if you want something that bad or I guess just try it and you tell yourself, yeah, that's that's my car. You know what I'm saying? That's my car. 
And then, you know, he starts talking about, yeah, that's my car. I own this car, whatever. Okay, cool. So they start saying, oh, yeah, you see that car? That's Sarah's car. So you're like, oh, yeah, okay. You're like, yeah, that's my car. Yeah. Until one day, but hey, can I get a ride? And you're like, um, yeah, I, I ain't got the keys, bro. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I left my keys at home. Like, let me just hop on this bike. I'll, 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 I'll go home and get the keys. Yeah. Like, go home and get the keys. The car's right here. It's me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But, oh, let's hop with the skateboard real quick. Tell about let's hop on this bike. Well, so <laughs> when he was riding together, I ain't never seen two people ride a skateboard. Me either. Before. Me either. I was like, yo, that's some talent right there. But, okay, but like, they were, people looked at them weird because they were, because he was a black dude skateboarding. Mm-hmm. Right? Like, and in, in 2023, people don't really look at that any different. But back in the day, yeah. if you were a black dude who was skateboarding, or if you liked anime, or you wore like high water pants, like black people couldn't be nerds back then. Nah. You know? Or there, there was only one black nerd ever, and it was Urkel. Yep, he, Steve Urkel. He made it very uncool to, to be a nerd. Nowadays, people look at Urkel like, oh shit, he's the dopest motherfucker ever. But like, yeah. Back then, man, nah, you, 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 nah. you couldn't be like that. Nah, you couldn't wear the white socks and church shoes. All I could do that was Michael Jackson. But, you had to, but you, the thing is, you had to hide the things you love. Mm. And that's, that's, one, that's one of the reasons why I like the Jonathan Majors character in here, because he, he was in here, he was just himself. My, my mm-hmm. mother was in Sunday school clothes all, all day. He, he was working at the fucking butcher shop with yeah. still the jacket on. Mm-hmm. Like, Speaking of, when that fish jumped on the boat, with the, <laughs> with the two arms, yeah, yeah. <laughs> bro, that look like the sea, look like the fish from The Simpsons. Because <laughs> the fucking, because the fucking power plant. But uh, here's the fucked up part. I actually asked myself, would I eat that or not? I, dude, I looked at it like, is that a fake fish? Is, it, is that CGI or did they make a fish to do that? I mean, it, the fish look real. I mean, it, it all look real. Hopefully, yeah. it was CGI. They just did something. But let's say, imagine go to the grocery store. You see a, a double eyed fish just chop the head off. Like, uh. Bro, listen, I I, I'd love to say I wouldn't. Mm-hmm. Okay, so you're just as fucked up as I am because I think I would too. Yeah. <laughs> listen, listen, if you hungry, if you listen, dog food don't smell bad, just so you know. So if you hungry and you see some some kibble, not even the kibble, but like you know the fucking the the shit the can, the can the canned food yeah they look like read one of them fucking look shit like, look like gravy bro, it's no that's beef stew that ain't dog food that's beef stew they just put a different wrapping on the motherfucker oh gosh I, I'm, I'm a, some, a lot of these dogs are here eating better than humans yeah true so, but I'm saying, mm, I'm saying you see a real real bad day. Food. Listen, a can of cat food, you look at it, but yo, that's cat food. I ain't eating that shit. But then yeah. you go to a French restaurant, like here's some pate, same goddamn thing. And you paying about to pay $38 for that shit. Yeah, true. Listen, I done ate enough pate in my life to know I might take that $4 can of cat food. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Put some hot sauce on it, call it a day. <laughs> no, no, I don't want the flavor. I like, don't want shit, you cats okay. having all the good flavor. Oh. Oh, man. But yeah, it's like it's the, the the story itself. It's like you know, you're the idea that a whole group of people have been priced out of a neighborhood. Mm. That's essentially gentrification, you know. When like <laughs> you know, the money comes into the neighborhood, it starts making everything nicer, which a lot of people who used to live there just can't afford to live there anymore. Mm-hmm. It's weird because like. I, in, in a certain way, I'm like, God, it fucking sucks because, you know, the people that built up that neighborhood, that made the neighborhood nice, whatever, like should still be able to live there. But I also like it to feel safe. And sometimes mm-hmm. those motherfuckers don't allow it to feel safe. Yeah. Yeah. But did they say Japanese had it first? Yeah, they said the Japanese were there until the concentration camps in World mm-hmm. War II. Which, which is weird. How, how do they? Okay. Because you see the houses, obviously, I'm sure modifications throughout the years, or the case may be, mm-hmm. but they didn't look like bad houses, at least on the inside of them. Hmm. It looked fairly big. Yeah, those you know look like the houses from fucking uh, Full House. Okay. Okay. So how do you go from those type of houses to concentration camps? What, what the fuck is wrong with our government? Well, so, I mean, so it was World War II. So when Pearl Harbor got bombed, they, you know, they mm. round, rounded up all the Japanese people and say, hey, man, y'all motherfuckers are probably spies. Mm. So we're putting them on concentration camps. This is a place called, uh, no, no, not Flowers for Algernon. That's the fucking, that's the rat. Um, 
It's uh, it's Manzanar. Manzanar was this concentration camp where all the Japanese people were. Okay. I read a book when I was younger. That, you know, something something from Manzanar. Something. It like sounds that. familiar. Yeah, that yeah. name sounds familiar. Yeah, but it's a thing like you know that's what happened during the war, and that's it's not good. Mm-hmm. You know? But it's it is a part of you know the U.S. past. So like you know, all of a sudden to say all of a sudden that shit happens, you're ripped out of your house. Then all of a sudden they're like, okay, you know, these are nice houses. Let's move all these other people in there and jack up the prices. Imagine mm. getting put in a concentration camp. Then all of a sudden you get, you finally get out and you find out your house, ain't, like that ain't your house no more. Yeah, it's fucked up. Yeah. Oh, this mm. is like governments. It's just, oh, it's, it's harsh reality. Yeah, that's, that's what's wrong with our government. That's, that's crazy as hell. <clears throat> imagine, if, imagine if they can still do that at free will. Like let, let's well, just say, can. I mean, but it's it's a lot more. Is um, what's one looking for? It's not as easy. No, you ever heard of uh, what is it called? It's called um, God damn it. There's this shit where like it, it. I forget what it's called, but it's a law where if the government says they need your land, they can take that shit. Hmm. I forget what the fuck it's called. But I, it comes in like it comes into play sometimes when they do like when they're trying to build like oil lines and shit like that. Mm-hmm. I forget what it is, but I remember I remember hearing about it when I was a kid. I was like, man, that that shit don't sound good at all. Like, you could be living here and they'd be like, hey man, we want to build a fucking highway here, and we're just we're, we're taking we're taking your land. Like that's, hmm. that's crazy. But they got like kind of they got to give you an offer to sell it, don't they? I don't know. First, I I don't know. Yeah, they can offer to buy it from you. Offer to yeah. Buy. Some shit happens, and I was in the like, all right. Now we're, we're taking this shit. I forget what's fuck. God damn it! No, hold on. Hmm. But okay, like, so so when you all right, let's talk about Jonathan Majors for a second. Okay, so he's in a lot of trouble right now. But in watching this movie, that's a talented motherfucker. Indeed, he's his acting like when I was watching when I first started watching it, I was like, okay, you know, like. He his his portrayal was you know it was cool, you could tell he's like you know really enca- encapsulating a character. Mm-hmm. But then when they got to that scene when he was actually doing the play, yeah, and he had like he was switching back and forth, mm-hmm. and then even like even when he was like uncomfortable giving dap, or like when he was trying to like you know try out the the the, the urban cuss words and shit like that, yeah, like it. It felt honest. It felt like someone who that's not who they are as a person, but mm. they're able to, you know, just put themselves their their mind in that in that moment. Like I gotta be someone who isn't used to speaking and talking like that. Gotcha. I oh. mean they they did do him dirty though. He had to run beside the skateboard most of the movie. Yeah. But I mean he's also like he he was the guy, he was like the good like the, the good conscience. Mm, okay in the play when he sits there and you know he basically i don't want to say he put the play together in order to knock some sense into jimmy Mm -hmm. but it felt like it felt like in that moment his emotions just took over Mm -hmm. he just had to you know say how he truly felt about his best friend would you because even even that speech he said something that stood out to me where he said, um, <clears throat> what he said, we're all a lot of people. Well, you know, he said, we're all a lot of things, but we limit ourselves to the box that we're born into yeah. or something like that with, without wanting to push past them. Yeah. And we talked about that before. Like people that just only know they block, you know, their neighborhood, don't want to go anywhere else, do nothing, do nothing else. You know, they think that's where they're supposed to be. When they, they said it before, like, okay, Michael Jordan is the greatest player I've ever played. But how do we know there wasn't some kid in the slums of fucking shit Arizona yeah that could outplay him but just never got noticed they, they well, had the money for college you know what well, I'm saying you know you know who Len Bias is right Len Len Bias yeah mm, well, Len Bias heard. Len Bias was supposed to be the next coming of Jordan he was okay nasty fucking mm. insanely good and he ended up getting drafted third by the Celtics okay and then Two days later, OD'd. Holy shit. But they were like, what could have been? Because he was supposed to be like fucking in like insane. Hmm. Yeah. Damn. Okay. Yeah. 
But no, it's like okay. So in that scene, like the the scene in the play where he's pretending to be the guy that's that wakes up every morning to put on a fucking suit to go talk shit about the the, the ocean or the the water. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. But he's doing that, and then he he ends up going into like a whole rant about Jimmy and being like, you know, he said something where he was like, you know, you can be a you're a carpenter, mm-hmm. you're. Uh, you're like one of the smartest people. Oh, he says all this shit. And he says, if you wake up tomorrow and you don't have that house, you still yep. all that. So it was like he was telling them, like, hey man, like, stop stop holding on <clears throat> to the past. <clears throat> like you can be anything you want to be, but you're just so caught up in the old shit that you, you can't see where you can be. Yeah. And I feel like there's a lot of people out there that are like that. Like they're you're so used to, like you said, you're so used to the block. Mm-hmm. That you don't see that, hey man, just you like to fucking, you like to dance. Go to fucking mm-hmm. school and be a ballerina. Yeah, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I feel, yeah like crazy. A, I feel like that's a, that's a, a symptom. And I, maybe not, not. Maybe not so much today because of the internet. With the internet, you you kind of you kind of see that there's a lot of people. Like, there's more options out there than just what you know. Mm-hmm. Back in the day, like you know, when you were in the hood, you didn't, you didn't do that kind of shit. Unless you met somebody that took you somewhere different, or mm-hmm. went on field trips or whatever, that's showing you something different. You had no idea it was more out there than what you knew. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Oh, which oh, is oh. like, go ahead. Hmm? I, I was just saying, which is why I appreciate Springfield Public Schools. Like, like I said, now that I'm older, we actually had a, a good school system. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I remember. Um, I remember my teacher in creative writing. She was telling me this story about how, because she lived in East Long Meadow, and East Long Meadow, you know, you from that area. They, y'all motherfuckers got money. Y'all yeah. got lawns. So, <laughs> <laughs> they got stairs. <laughs> so she was telling me this story about how, you know, she would be talking to her friends and stuff like that, and you know, they were teachers in like East Long Meadow and shit like that, and then. She'd be like, you know, I like being a teacher in Springfield. And they'd be like, you sure? Like, you're not scared? You know, you don't need metal detectors and all this shit. And she was like, no, like, over there, you get a variety of people. Like, mm. there's, there's more real people over there. It's like, mm. you know, you're getting a, a wide breadth of the of the people around you. It's not just the same cookie cutter, you know, you know, fucking Boy Scouts and Girl Scouts and shit like that. Yeah. And that, that, that always resonated with me because it's like you you gotta walk into the dirty parts of the neighborhood and the nice parts of the neighborhood to see kind of where you fit in or where you want to fit in mm. you no know? yeah true I mean, that's i feel like that's why me and you used to go hang out in northampton all the time because it's like it's just it's way more chill it was way more our vibe yeah yeah definitely you know what i'm saying which is also goes back to what i was saying about chicago I could be in the hood. It was fun. But once I got a taste of rooftops and yachts and, you know, just chilling and just still seeing a variety of people, it's yeah. like, okay, cool. So I can still work hard and do what I got to do where I'm at. That don't mean I got to go party where I'm at. I can go anywhere. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But yeah. Well, okay. So was there a moment in this movie where you, like, where the story mm-hmm. really, like, not necessarily hit home, but like made you feel a certain way? Um, I got time. Uh, okay, I, I want to say when they find out Kofi got killed. All right, I I I I was leaning towards there myself. Okay, you talked uh, me, for me. one, it was very very unexpected, but it was almost like that. Okay, I know he was just talking shit about me. I thought it was cool, whatever. Like, even though I probably want to fight him the day before for him talking shit, that to me, I wanted him to die. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And most of the time, which I hate to say this, when you get a boondock said it in the best words possible, a nigga moment. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <clears throat> yeah. It's that that because I really I really believe that shit, I'm gonna just say shit, most young black men don't know how to articulate their emotions. I can say that because you're I feel like y'all are forced to be strong. Mm-hmm. You're yeah. always forced mm-hmm. to be strong in that moment. You can't show weakness. Mm-hmm. Anything, anything less than being, you know, stoic and steadfast is always a sign of weakness. Yeah. So at that moment where he he's he doesn't know what to do besides want to fight because that's the only thing he can 
the only way he knows how to express himself. Yeah. And when Jimmy says he was my friend too, it was almost like a smack in the face. Like he wasn't just your friend. I know y'all talk shit all day long, but he was my friend too. And he just cried. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I feel like that moment was like, I don't, okay. I don't have to be hard right now. I feel like in that moment, cause he felt like, I feel like in that moment he was like reevaluating his life. Cause like, yeah, this mm-hmm. is the shit we do. This is shit we do all day. And, you know, and there's no danger to it. But then all of a sudden, you know, my friend ain't here no more. And when Jimmy says, you know, it's, you know, y'all, y'all, the, y'all the ones are always talking shit. This is your fault. He's like, oh yeah. Mm-hmm. And he just like, and it's almost like, it is. It isn't Jimmy telling him it's his fault. It's him. Mm. It felt like Jimmy was validating what he already knew. Mm. Like, yeah, it, I I knew it was my fault, and the fact that you're telling me now is like validating that shit. So in that moment, he's like, he all he could do was cry because he's like, yeah, like I feel like it is my fault that fucking Kofi's dead right now because mm. all we do is the same shit every fucking day. Yeah, and it's not doing any good for anyone. Mm-hmm. You know? I like the fact that like the Jonathan Majors character was like uh he would he was just observing the people around him. Mm-hmm. So you could see him like when he's trying to play his play together, he's you know, he would hear someone talk, he'd be like, I like that. Because that's what we mm-hmm. told Kobe because I believe you. Mm-hmm. Pulled him aside and before he invited him to the house. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Goes, yeah you, you could do some work. Yeah, you know, he goes, You he goes, I believe you. He walked mm-hmm. away and it was like, Man, get the fuck out of here. Why you always come around here with that weird shit? <laughs> Matter of fact, after the play, did you hear people talking shit when they um start here walking out and somebody said, I don't know what the hell that shit was. <laughs> uh, but oh, it's, man. it's just so like I felt like with this movie, you kind of got a fully a, a fully formed idea of like I hate to say what it is to be black in America, but what it is to be alienated and trying to find your place okay you know like the fight mm-hmm. the, the argument he had with that jimmy had with his dad when he told mm-hmm. him that he's living in the house that he used to that they used to live in mm-hmm. it was almost like his dad was like had to uh had, he had to relive the idea that like i used to have that that's not my house anymore yeah and it's my fault Mm. While he's putting together fucking bootleg DVDs, yeah, yeah. <laughs> make sure you don't I've leave no white. That. Don't leave no I've white seen, on the side. I seen that. I was like, oh shit! I ain't seen a bootleg DVD in forever, yes, man. Years. Yeah, but I mean, like, yeah. When you, I feel like there's a a lot of points in this movie where people just had to come face to face with their shortcomings. Hmm. And like that, that was me. I felt like I've had moments like that in my life where just I had to come face to face with some of the choices I made, some of the, some of the, you know, lack of fucking moral, I don't know, moral you wanna give, fiber. You want to give an example? Eh, I've told you before. I'll, I'll look back into it. But like, I mean, well, you know, me is different. If, yeah. Unless it's something you can share with the world. Yeah, and not not right now. I'll, I'll go into that later. But you know, no problem. At some no point, problem. at some point, we'll find that out. But it's just a matter of like, you come face to face with these choices you've made in your life, and you gotta just like, you own up to it. You accept it that like I can't I can't change these choices I've made. All mm-hmm. I can do is you know make moves to to be better. Mm. That's one of the reasons why I think the dad showed up at the at the at the the play. Mm. Because he could have just ran away from, you know, his past. But he was like, no, nah, like, apparently my son is happy about something. Yeah. Let me go, you know, show some support. I guess now we're talking about it. It wasn't a bad movie, but it definitely had me like, what the fuck is going on here? It's very abstract. Until, yeah, de- definitely. Very, yeah. But it, it, to me, it was abstract in a way. It was at, not like fucking Saltburn. Saltburn was abstract. To be salacious. This movie was abstract in a way because I felt like it was trying to be complex mm-hmm. and it allowed the viewer to really think for themselves or really see like this story develop. 
Saltburn was just let me do some some sexual shit just to do some sexual shit. You said on, on that episode, so we're gonna leave this camera right here, and you got fifteen minutes with the grave. Yeah, do what <laughs> whatever you do. you do is what you do. Yeah, we going whatever you. That's what we gonna run. <laughs> did you did you read the comment online? Somebody was just like, "Thanks, I'm never gonna watch this movie." <laughs> I was like, bro, that shit was, uh, I for the for the life of me, I can't see why it was getting so much. Pre- oh, I can see why I was getting so much press, but like, it's not look good. Just because you do some crazy shit, don't mean the movie's good. Yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. But um, yeah, last last black man in San Francisco. <laughs> it's I'm just saying, like, I feel like I felt like this movie was it really you know it really drove home the idea that you can't be you can't be caught up in your past because at the end of the movie jimmy has to come face to face with the idea that like i can't be stuck here Mm -hmm. trying to be you know trying to hold on to something that isn't isn't mine anymore i think a lot of people do that whether it's dealing with relationships uh cars homes um Shit, anything that's material, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like I'm never letting this go. My grandma, my grandma gave this to me, or that, whatever. And it's like, hey, sometimes you got to, so you can keep moving on. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But <clears throat> well, I mean, it's also it's it's like you know, it's trying your best. That my that my grand my grandpa gave me that car, or that was my grandfather's car. So I'm gonna do everything I can to to hold on to it. Not yeah. realizing, like, hey, man, your fucking family is in dire straits and you guys need money like mm. i know you love this car but like what's what choices are you gonna make are you gonna sacrifice your family and their well-being because you want to take care of this oldsmobile yeah or so when you keep putting money into it we say you know what you better get a new car just let it go yeah let it go you know what i'm saying yeah i think yeah. i think in the movie jimmy was like i think the house represented yeah like i said jimmy's like the the happy moment in his life Mm -hmm. and then he had to just realize like as long as he keeps holding on to those moments he's never allowed to find new moments Mm. you know interesting because yeah you ever find those moments where like you're always they they say you know comparison is a thief of joy Mm -hmm. and it's like if as long as you're comparing to another moment in your life or you're like okay this moment wasn't as good as this another one how are you ever going to appreciate anything good coming in your life yeah definitely now the fact that makes you think of another i had the conversation with a girl i was dating um and she was so she was, she was, she was so stuck on trying to make her ex miss her yep and i said why you're over there making him miss what he could have gotten you're making me miss what i could be getting elaborate i think i know what you're trying to say I said, why you over? Why you said, why you're trying to make him miss what he, what he, what he had, and you're making me miss what I could be getting. Okay, so you're basically saying, you know, this, this per, this persona you're putting out to mm-hmm. make him miss what he could have had. Yeah, turning you off, like that ain't the real you, and it's not. It's, it's not really like it was a turn off. It was like you could be giving me that that energy. You know what I'm saying? Let me look at you. Let me see what you got. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. You know, yeah, I, I see that. I say, while you focused on him, you're missing the fact that I'm focused on you. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because you're doing everything you can to make him miss what he had, but you're making me miss what I could be getting, even though you're with me. Yeah, yeah. Because your mindset ain't here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? I mean, this is completely different, but like when you compare like Popeyes and KFC, like you can't appreciate the new fried chicken because you're always comparing it to the old fried chicken, right? I'm dead serious. I'm dead serious. I had to listen. I had a moment. I had a moment with the Fast and Furious ride at Universal. Oh, I'm, 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 keep, keep talking. I had a moment when I at the, with the Fast and Furious ride at Universal. Like I've I've been dr- drunk at certain points, and I would be walking through that line like this ride is shit. Fuck this ride is fucking like. The the line's the best part of this ride. All this, shit. <laughs> I but, can't see you talking shit like that. But okay, bro, I was bro, I was like five or six like Long Island iced teas in. Oh, it was not a good day, bro. It was not a. <laughs> but the other day I was there and I went on the ride and I just kind of pushed all that out 
and just mm-hmm. had to appreciate the ride for what it was. And I was like, you know what? This actually ain't that bad. Mm-hmm. Like if I was, you know, it's not for me. I'm not, it's not the type of ride I'm going to go for, but for people who can't handle the crazy rides or like for young <laughs> kids, like this actually isn't you know, too bad of a ride as long as you mm-hmm. let yourself go and like stop, let go of those preconceived notions of what the ride's supposed to be and just accept it for what it is. Hmm. Wouldn't do bad. You said universal, right? Yeah. Every so often, I think about that one time we was there. And just for shits and giggles, I wish I would have said something to that girl with the blind eye. (laughs) Uh. (laughs) (laughs) Bro, anytime I think about you and Universal, I just think about after the fucking the snake bite. And your shit was swolled up looking like Hellboy. Oh, (laughs) Oh, man. Uh, Had to wear your damn satchel. (laughs) Oh. Uh, Uh, You you should have been there when my brothers were there during Halloween Horror Nights. mm -hmm. Bro, I don't know what Seren was thinking. Seren, if you listen to this, yeah, yeah, I'm talking to you. I don't know what she was thinking. But you didn't need to be drinking that much for no goddamn reason. But we carried him out like fucking weekend at Bernie's. It was bad. Man. <laughs> My boy Mike was just like, bro, he goes, I love your brothers. I fucking love him. Like, yeah, that motherfucker's going to fucking wake up in a fucking trash can soon because he done trying to go f- drink for drink with you. Nah. I mean, I, I like drinking, but shit, when I'm doing something that involves the extra body movements, yeah. you got to regulate that shit because I, I ain't trying to throw up. Yeah, 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 I, I, yeah, that, that time when I was talking shit about the Fast Fears ride, like, I ended up throwing up at a McDonald's after, like, it was Man. bad, bad. Yeah. All right, yo, final thoughts on the last black man in San Francisco. Um, now, now after talking about it, it's not as bad as I thought it was, with more in in depth to it. Um, uh, but, but, okay, but what was it about the conversation that made you rethink your your ideas about the movie? Cause that's because um, one of the things one of the things I kind of dislike. I'm not saying mm-hmm. you're doing that, but I'm saying one of the things I kind of dislike is when you when someone else can sway what other another person thinks about a movie. Okay, so I'm not gonna say I was swayed, but it was a different. It was hearing somebody's perspective to make you think about it differently, and it's like okay, so I guess I guess in so many words it is being swayed, but not done on purpose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. where it's not like. You should have liked it because this is this. This is like, okay, well, you didn't like it and you said why. I liked it and I said why. And it's like, huh, okay. So maybe I maybe I just don't like it as much as I did at the beginning of the conversation. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe, maybe, maybe uh, with a different perspective is making you like reconsider some of, some, maybe some of the things you didn't understand. Mm-hmm. It's like making you reconsider all those moments. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I like the movie because I just, to me, this is an artsy movie mm-hmm. that actually, you know, is it's not it's it doesn't take the it doesn't try to be overtly crazy just for shock factor. Okay, it's like they're trying to tell a really good story. Yeah, that's it, and it's a little more you know, it's a little more complex than like your average you know, movie you see in the theater. And I just think the acting was fucking phenomenal. Yeah. Like, Even Danny Glover, he knew he had a small part in there where he had, he had lived with eight minutes of screen time. Yeah. <laughs> but he played a decent blind dude. Yeah. But here's the thing. When when they was watching the movie, the TV, yeah. I could see he was blind. But then at certain times he was talking, I was like, is he blind right now? I don't know. <laughs> but maybe... I. Uh, I, I heard this thing where it was Bryce Dallas Howard. And she was talking about when she was getting ready for that movie, The Village, where she had to play the blind girl. Okay. You ever seen The Village, right? I'm not so, not even so familiar. M. Night Shyamalan, where they, uh, they all live in this like small, tiny village. Then you kind of find out they're just living in the middle of a fucking state park. It's almost like the birth of a religion kind of thing. Okay. But uh, she plays this blind girl. And she said one thing she notices about blind people is they look at you. In the eye, because mm. like, you know, in some movies they they people he'll be blind with like this, yeah, looking away to show off that they're blind. But mm-hmm. she notices that like blind people will actually just look at you in the eye, and like, but it's almost like they're looking through you. Interesting. So, huh. yeah, but yeah, I like this movie. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, 
Matter of fact, it's on Netflix. It's supposed to, it's supposed to leave it soon. Yeah. Uh, for the people watching, so you might have to find it on a different um streaming service. I, I um, say I say watch it. I say, hey man, give give Jonathan Majors like that motherfucker's too good. Like, I know he's going through some shit right now, and a lot of the a lot of the things being said about him aren't necessarily what actually he's being uh, blamed. Everything for. everything is alleged right now. Well, not necessarily alleged. It's like you could put down there he's you know uh, he was convicted of abuse. Mm-hmm. You don't actually look at the 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 allegations of what he's being convicted of is like oh he's being convicted of uh accidentally hurting the girl's finger not on purpose but while he was trying to get the phone back that he stole from her or that she took from him Hmm. so she took his phone and in trying to get it back he hurt her finger Hmm. and that's what he's domestic violence Mm, interesting yeah they just know that man got money right now. They see him in Creed three, and it's like, okay, we can get this. Nigga. You know what's funny is like, it's I was reading this article, and like they were saying that some of the, they're saying all these other women are coming out, and like you know, uh, they're saying he was like abusive back in the day and shit like that. Hmm. Some of the descriptions they're using for him mm-hmm. are describing how he looks now, because if you look hmm. in this movie, he don't look like Creed three Jonathan Majors. No, nah, he don't. He looked like fucking everybody hates Chris. Yeah. It's like skinny. But so I'm like, I think, I don't know. I, I hate to say they're trying to like fuck up a man's uh, career. I wouldn't doubt it. I mean, I mean, what's the, what's the, what's the phrase? Guilty? No, is it? Guilty is it guilty? No. Yeah, something like that. Shit. But I mean, is it innocent to proven guilty? I don't know. I don't know. The, the, the court of public opinion seems to be stronger than it's ever been. And everybody got one because they got a fucking cell phone. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, that's the latest episode of Surat and Chris's Movie Therapy Podcast. Once again, it is your boy Surat, a.k.a. Mikazi. And your boy Chris Brown, a.k.a. Red Ford Delta. I'll be good out there. And everybody just excuse Chris for not wearing a shirt today. It's just, it is what it is. No, I ain't had a shirt in the dells in that damn cloak. <laughs> I was free as a bird. (laughs) (laughs) All right, we out. Oh, man.